welcome so we will continue in this session about the characters of uh, fungi so we were seeing in the last session about kingdom fungi okay so we have seen that uh, the hype uh, may be septate or aseptate or they may be branched or unbranched like then so here the cells of fungi are covered by cell walls so they have cell walls and these cell walls are made up of a substance called chitin so this is what it makes different from the plants okay so where they consist of uh, uh, cellulose so here the cell walls are made up of uh, chitin and this chitin is actually a polymer of is a okay it's a polymer of n acetyl glucosamine units so it's a polymer of n acetyl glucosamine units okay so then like some members of this fungi are found in association with other species okay so some species of fungi okay they form symbiotic association they form symbiotic okay association so here uh, the symbiotic association which means uh, symbiosis where uh, association of two different species uh, in which both the species will get benefit so here uh, examples of this symbiotic association like uh, lichens okay and then mycorrhiza so those two uh, are examples of this symbiotic association and we know the lichens is a symbiotic association between okay alga and a fungus and coming to mycorrhiza the mycorrhiza is a symbiotic association uh, right between the roots of okay higher plants plus the fungus so fungus uh, associating with the roots of higher plants will result in the formation of mycorrhiza and lichens is an association between alga and uh, fungus uh, coming to reproduction in fungi so we see uh, the three modes of reproduction so coming to reproduction so we will find vegetative reproduction then we'll also see a sexual mode of reproduction and we'll also see the sexual mode of reproduction so coming to uh, vegetative mode of reproduction so this will be uh, by fragmentation okay and by the formation of uh, budding so i mean uh, by the formation of uh, buds and also by formation i mean or by uh, sorry uh, fission so fragmentation budding and fission so here fragmentation uh, where okay so it uh, uh, mycelial branches okay or the myce the hypae branches okay if they okay break into two pieces so if they break up into two pieces okay or into any number of pieces and uh, need not be necessarily only two pieces okay say this uh, one okay formed into one and this one and another one okay this one develops into new okay mycelium and this one develops into an another one okay and this one develops into an another one 
okay so that is uh, fragmentation and uh, in some uh, you know uh, fungi like in case of yeast budding can uh, take place so buds will develop as a small outgrowth okay so as a small outgrowth they develop right and then the karyokinesis takes place and uh, you can see the nucleus is already distributed and then that will be followed by later okay cytokinesis so so this is uh, finally the bud gets separated so this is uh, how the budding uh, takes place like example in case of uh, okay so budding in yeast right and fission where a cell will divide into okay two daughter individuals so it divides into okay so two daughter individuals so this is the process of uh, fission here okay and this is a budding so a bud develops so this uh, you can say so it is like this so this is the bud right so that's uh, three uh, modes of uh, you know vegetative reproduction fragmentation budding and uh, fission uh, you can take examples of fragmentation also uh, we can see in <coughs> okay uh, bread mold okay and uh, fission we can also see in case of uh, yeast uh, we call it uh, uh, the fission yeast so that's about vegetative uh, reproduction that takes place by uh, fragmentation budding and fission and then coming to asexual uh, mode of reproduction so coming to this uh, asexual mode of reproduction so asexual reproduction so here under asexual reproduction uh, it takes place by formation of spores okay by formation of spores so these asexual spores are like conidia then sporangio spores or by formation of uh, juice spores so here the asexual spores are conidia sporangio spores or juice spores so here uh, these uh, juice spores can be okay uh, motile so they can be motile okay and these uh, conidia sporangio spores or uh, juice spores uh, they can be you know produced uh, inside a special uh, structure called uh, fruiting bodies so produced in fruiting bodies so later i'll discuss about this uh, fruiting bodies how uh, inside these fruiting bodies the development of uh, uh, right so this uh, takes place the structures right so that is by formation of uh, spores in asexual reproduction and there are even formation of spores seen in case of uh, uh, sexual uh, reproduction so coming to so sexual reproduction so here also by formation of spores so by formation of spores so these spores that are produced in asexual reproduction are different from the spores which are produced in uh, sexual reproduction so these uh, will include like uh, who spores then include like uh, <coughs> the basilio uh, spores and uh, okay uh, one more we'll take asco spores okay so who spores basilio spores and asco spores are examples okay under which this uh, uh, under the sexual reproduction the spores are formed so later uh, when i discuss uh, each class individually we will see about this uh, how the conidia are produced okay the juice spores and then uh, the basidio spores and so on okay All right so that's uh, some uh, general characters of uh, uh, fungi here now especially in sexual reproduction so in case of sexual 
uh, cycle uh, in fungi. Sexual cycle in fungi. So here coming to the sexual cycle in fungi, so it shows actually uh, right uh, uh, two uh, stages. Of course, uh, one the first one will be uh, there will be a fusion between protoplasm between two motile or non motile uh, gametes. Okay, so the sexual cycle uh, in fungi shows some stages. So first one is actually called uh, plasmo gummy and second stage is called karyo gummy and the third stage will be uh, the process of uh, reductional division in zygote so that is meiosis in zygote so meiosis in zygote okay so here first we will see uh, the plasma gummy so which will be uh, the fusion between so fusion between two okay two protoplasms so fusion between two protoplasms okay uh, that will be uh, between two motile or non motile gametes okay uh, or I'll mention so fusion of protoplasms between two motile or okay two non motile gametes so two motile or non motile gametes so motile we know uh, they are movable okay uh, so movement so like for example uh, the one uh, with the flagella they may have structures and uh, with that they are capable of uh, moving so between so this is movable so between two movable or two non movable uh, gametes uh, take place so here okay so this is uh, uh, the fusion between two protoplasts okay so here i just mentioned like this so here is the nucleus so this is the plasma coming so how it is seen the plasmogamy okay between two uh, gametes then later it will be the karyogamy so which will be fusion of two nuclei so these two nuclei will fuse later once the okay so first uh, step that is plasmogamy is finished then these two will come together okay and fuse and this is a stage what we call it uh, the karyogamy. So first one will be the plasmogamy that will be followed by karyogamy and then later it will be followed by okay, uh, meiosis in zygote. Now here uh, in some cases uh, the plasmogamy is not immediately followed by karyogamy. So as a result what happens the nuclei uh, remain separate. So this nucleus and the nucleus of these two gametes okay remain separate they don't okay fuse and this is a condition what we call it a dikaryophase dikaryophase so here i told you that uh, in after plasmogamy karyogamy takes place but in certain conditions okay uh, the plasmogamy is not immediately followed by the karyogamy so as a result uh, the two nuclei remain okay separate and the condition is called okay uh, the dikaryophase okay so of course uh, you can also call the dikaryon okay and the phase we call it dikaryophase so this is a dikaryon okay so you can also call it uh, dikaryotic stage dikaryotic stage right so dikaryo or dikaryotic stage so uh, in this uh, we know that the gametes are uh, you know haploid so this one is a haploid 
and this is also haploid. So these two haploid uh, nuclei or the gametes which are also haploid, they remain okay separate for a period of time. So later, after a certain period of time, these nuclei will uh, will uh, fuse. So that will result in. fuse okay so here you can see uh, now the karyogamy has taken place karyogamy has taken place so once the karyogamy is finished it results in the formation of a zygote so it results in the formation of zygote so this is 2n now these uh, zygotes will undergo uh, the pro, you know meiosis so the zygote the next it undergoes meiosis and then it produces okay so it produces okay spores so it produces spores so these spores are haploid and these spores upon germination they give rise to again uh, those filamentous uh, structures called hypae and the network of uh, so many filaments they form and then uh, that results in the formation of mycelium and again that mycelium okay will produce uh, the fruiting bodies and the fruiting bodies will produce these spores and will be released into the atmosphere so this is uh, the sexual cycle uh, how it takes place in case of uh, uh, fungi now we will see the classification of this uh, kingdom fungi okay so of course there is a big classification and uh, okay that has been uh, right uh, reduced and made it simplified okay so we will see uh, the classification of uh, okay this kingdom fungi so here uh, this is divided into four uh, classes okay so here it all depends on the morphology of mycelium we know for classifying we require some uh, criteria so here on what basis we classify the kingdom uh, fungi into different uh, groups is one okay so this i will mention as basis for classification so basis for classification of kingdom uh, fungi i'm not talking about okay other classifications or other kingdoms especially okay i mean uh, in uh, kingdom fungi only so morphology of uh, mycelium uh, this is uh, one criteria they have considered then the next one is mode of uh, spore formation mode of spore formation so how the spore formation okay takes place right either endogenously exogenously uh, that i'm going to discuss uh, individually when i see uh, when i talk about uh, uh, the individual classes okay then okay so more of a spore formation and uh, okay uh, the mode of uh, okay fruiting body uh, formation okay and more of fruiting body formation so based on these uh, okay three things mainly they classified the kingdom fungi into okay uh, various classes but the main classes we are going to see so it's uh, divided into <coughs> we'll see here the kingdom fungi okay so is classified okay so i'm going to put under okay two main headings so where uh, sexual reproduction sexual reproduction okay not identified so sexual reproduction okay not identified and sexual reproduction identified 
okay so whatever that uh, classes of fungi i am going to put under these two okay headings where we see sexual reproduction we do not know uh, the sexual reproduction it is not identified okay and uh, sexual reproduction identified so here uh, the sexual reproduction where it is not identified so is called the fungi imperfecti so they are called okay uh, fungi imperfecti so those are okay nothing but uh, deutero mycetes so under this okay so we have is deuteromycetes so these deuteromycetes of course are called fungi imperfect or imperfect uh, uh, fungi okay that later i will discuss okay so these uh, this is the group uh, in which we have included all those uh, you know fungi whose uh, sexual reproduction we did not identify of course later uh, researchers uh, may help to identify okay that we'll see it later then coming to sexual reproduction identified so in this uh, i'm going to again classify into two different uh, categories so one i'll put them as a primitive fungi and then advanced fungi so primitive uh, fungi and advanced okay fungi so here in this uh, primitive fungi the mycelium is aseptic so here mycelium is aseptic whereas in advanced fungi the mycelium is septic okay so in advanced group the mycelium is septic and uh, in primitive fungi so we don't see uh, the okay uh, i mean uh, the hyphae whatever they are not okay septic so they are aseptic okay and this group we call them as a u mycota so this group is called u mycota right and those advanced uh, uh, fungi where the mycelium is uh, uh, septic uh, that group we call it a u mycota we know the U stands for okay true so U mycota and U mycota U mycota is a primitive uh, group of fungi and U mycota are advanced group of uh, fungi so under this uh, U mycota we have uh, one group that is called phycomycetes so we have a group called phycomycetes and under uh, the mycelium uh, where the sub that is uh, u mycota we have two groups one is ascomycetes and another one called basidiomycetes so ascomycetes and uh, basidiomycetes okay so i hope uh, it's clear so kingdom fungi we divided into sexual reproduction identified so for, i mean not identified uh, if not identified we are going to put them under this deuteromycetes this is the class okay so we have obtained all the four classes so right so we'll see one okay two so this is three and okay four so deuteromycetes phycomycetes ascomycetes and uh, basidiomycetes so here uh, we see that the sexual reproduction is not identified so there the sexual reproduction identified so here so the primitive fungi and these are advanced fungi okay and these are uh, imperfect fungi so already which i mentioned here i mentioned imperfect Right. So now uh, we will discuss uh, these uh, groups one by one. So first we will see about the primitive fungi, then we will see about the advanced fungi and then later I will discuss lastly about this uh, deuteromycetes group. Okay, so first one we will see phycomycetes.
So the first class is phycomycetes. Okay. So these uh, phycomycetes actually are algae-like fungi. So they are algae-like fungi. Okay, but they are not uh, algae. That and these uh, are found in okay aquatic habitats. So found in aquatic habitats. Okay, so that is in waters we find them. Then we also find them on okay decaying wood. Okay, and also on decaying wood in moist and uh, damp soils. We know for a fungi to grow uh, compulsory there must be moistness uh, present. Okay, so these phycomycetes we see them growing okay in moist and okay uh, damp uh, soils and these okay also and also live as obligate parasites so live as obligate parasites so here obligate parasites which means uh, those uh, parasites that can okay so or that live only as parasites so there are certain okay there is a other classification of actually parasites uh, uh, these uh, some parasites they become okay uh, you know parasite only if a host is available only if a host is available uh, then they become uh, par uh, okay a parasite if host is not available they will live on their own uh, but in some cases okay uh, a organism that lives uh, only as a parasite so is what we call obligate parasite and if the host is not available the parasite will not be uh, able to survive it dies so those uh, okay uh, the organisms that can uh, live only as parasite and they die in the absence of host okay so they are all called obligate parasites okay so so they uh, they are free living some of them and some of them uh, are obligate uh, parasites and this uh, are seen on plants so obligate parasites on plants uh, which are included under these uh, phycomycetes then mycelium is aseptic the mycelium is accepted so already i have uh, mentioned okay this uh, phycomycetes under o mycota which are primitive fungi and primitive fungi will have uh, uh, the mycelium accepted so mycelium is accepted and if it is accepted then we see the condition called uh, xenocytic and it is xenocytic so we don't find any uh, partitions and we see okay something like this so this is aseptate and xenocytic condition okay right uh, with this uh, i will end today's session so in the next session we will discuss uh, further you know uh, characters of this uh, phycomycetes